Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Very big thank you to all the new Patreon supporters, there are a lot of you every single day, hello. As always, a great way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by leaving a comment, by leaving two comments if you're feeling frisky, or by subscribing if you have not already done so, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. The last 12 hours have been, uh, as you know the deal, the cryptocurrency space is never boring. There's always a lot of ridiculousness that's floating around. The last couple of hours, Bitcoin's price yesterday, I believe it was, fell down to around four, is it 46, 47,000 US dollars, somewhere around that level. There were a lot of people talking about that we're going to have a big momentum, we're going to have a big move. I mentioned that in the last video. And as it were, as it just so happened to be, as so many other times when there was a dip, you have to understand, I cannot ever explicitly go on the air and say, by the dip, but I give hints and clues and basically, was it Hansel and Gretel with the little pieces of, of uh, a bread or M&Ms, whatever they were using to try and get back to where they were, but I'm leaving entire loaves of bread so it becomes abundantly obvious. Anyway, the point is, um, yeah, bulls bought the dip, as one would assume they would, because it's usually rich people buying. And now we're getting calls for a Bitcoin breakout. This was everywhere. Everyone's talking about how high is Bitcoin going to go, where Bitcoin is going to go, how high Bitcoin could potentially go sometime during the course of this week, because prices keep rising. For those of you who did not know or are not looking at the screen, especially in the corner of the screen over here, Bitcoin went from around 47,000 it is currently at, on the screen, 50500 give or take, US dollars. So the price definitely popped up. Bitcoin price forecast, Bitcoin elevation to $52,000 catches momentum. We are going to get there at some point. Nobody knows when, nobody knows how. We probably know the how people, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's the buying of the, the coins. Um, anyway, um, this one also says... Bitcoin analyst sees aggressive bull run towards $64,000. Here's why. I assume it's because people are buying. Not many people have sold. I even saw another metric that was like um, uh, a lot of mega companies were surprised that smaller holders didn't sell their coins because they were anticipating smaller players in the market to be like, oh gosh, I'm afraid. I must sell and therefore getting rid of their coins so that the whales can actually buy it up. <clears throat> the issue is... The whales were going to be buying regardless. This is why the price popped up by around $4,000. So uh, thank goodness, hopefully, no one out there sold and maybe even bought the dip. So as it stands right now, the cryptocurrency market is moving up. Many coins are up by anywhere from around 1, 2, 3, 4, 12%. Depends on the time of the day and the yada yada. Bitcoin's definitely going up. The entire market is moving up. It looks very nice to see because we should not have gone down at all before. But we did. It just happens, it's it's cyclical, it's triangles, it's technical analysis, whatever people decide to tell me in the comment section that I seemingly just am not paying attention to because, you know, 900 Bitcoin created per day, three companies buying 2,700 Bitcoin. The math works out for me as we should not be falling in price, but I, <laughs> I just don't, I guess I just don't know a lot. Anyway, that's the price news, and let's move on. Next up, in like very popular big news that's kind of all over the place. Um, separate instances this morning saw a billionaire embrace the crypto sector <clears throat> and a regulator move away from it, which I will explain. Dan Loeb, I assume that's how you pronounce that, founder and billionaire investor of Third Point, a New York-based hedge fund, said in tweets yesterday that he was looking into the crypto sector and assessing the various opportunities it provided. Loeb is famous. For turning $3 million into $17 billion must be nice <clears throat> and is well known on Wall Street. Amazing. The crypto sector is now where he's seeking a new opportunity because he sees it as money to be made and therefore he wants to make money. He said, I've been doing a deep dive into crypto lately, uh, adding that it was a real test of <clears throat> why <clears throat> it only happens when I make videos. During the course of the day, I can talk a thousand times and it never happens. <clears throat> But alas, here we are. If you've seen me before, you know this is just how it is. Intellectually open to new and controversial ideas. He said, culturally, I compare bridging the crypto world with the old as akin to finding a portal between two distinct worlds in the multiverse. Sounds like a Marvel movie. 
And that's what he said all stuff right there. And then there's like a picture of digital people. I, I don't know what's happening. So the news is uh, another very rich person is now taking his foray into the cryptocurrency space. I'm pretty sure he forayed before, but now he's foraying in, in front of us. Um, so the news is, is that he could potentially, no one knows, be getting into the cryptocurrency space. But I'm going to just assumption that he probably actually is. <clears throat> The other part was, uh, while Loeb became the latest billionaire to step into the crypto space, a New York regulator sounded the alarm about the digital currency space as well in a statement. New York Attorney General Latita James advised members of the crypto industry and investors to stay vigilant against participating in or becoming a victim of illegal activities. Um, This was posted around everywhere that the Attorney General had said something Crypto's evil. Don't touch crypto. Don't do anything. What she basically said was, there are scams out there. Please watch out for them. There are a lot of them. Make sure you're not losing your money. But the news flipped it around on many other websites as if she had said something like, don't buy Bitcoin. Don't buy this coin. They're terrible. No, she's just saying, like, make sure, as regulators do, if you happen to purchase some, make sure you're doing it in a regulated way. There's another news story. I don't have it here. You can Google it. I think the number was 234 or 243. Uh, Someone, you know those websites and those other videos where people are like, hey, you send me a Bitcoin, I send you 10. Don't know why people fall for that. Uh, Apparently somebody sent, once again, the number is 243 or 234, 234,000 or $243,000 worth of Bitcoin to one of those addresses. Uh, Just assuming that they were going to get uh, $2.4 million back for whatever reason. So anyway, yeah, um, it's not that they're stepping away from crypto. You have to understand that our market is actually about this big. And I don't mean the entirety of all the altcoins. I mean the coins that actually matter are about this big. And everything else within the space, you've seen my comment section. If you have not seen the comment section, bless your heart. Um, there are people mimicking me every single day. I try my best to get rid of them. And then when I go back an hour later to try and comment on people's stuff, I see nine more of them have popped up. That's not a fake number. Um, if you are writing in the comment section pretending to be me, can you please go get a life? It's really annoying at this point. Uh, people know that it's not me, that it's you. Uh, Because the English is also terribly incorrect. That's not me making fun of anyone who does not speak English. I speak multiple languages. I do not speak them perfectly, all of them. Uh, It's more of a, uh, the comments are like, hey, you want money? Call number on telegram. Like they separate the word as well. And I'm like, what do you, you, do you think? The point is, if you are new here, I will never ask you for money. I will never ask you for your information. I will never tell you to, or ask you to contact me so that I can give you some type of private information that I'm, I'm, I'm currently withholding from all the viewers. Anything I have, I give to you. That's how the channel works. Anyway, so yes, please be vigilant. Please be aware. Uh, and yeah, so another rich guy is going to get into the space. Surprise. And without further ado, let's move on. Here's a surprising one. The largest cryptocurrency asset manager firm, Grayscale, has made a purchase of 174,000 Litecoin last month. That would make around $30 million for the current market. It feels like it would be more. Anyway, this effectively means the company bought a whopping 80% of all Litecoin that were mined in the last month alone. There's that little tweet right there. According to the data from the market tool Bibit, Grayscale currently holds around $1.4 million worth $248 million? What? Making it the firm's third largest crypto holding after Bitcoin and Ethereum. <coughs> Grayscale is getting quite interesting. Uh, moving into these other coins, I'm not sure if it's because they are trying to <coughs> simply corner a market. Or they see opportunity. Not really sure what it is. Here's the actual, uh, I guess, the photo of the tweet for their holdings right here for Grayscale and then the the 30-day change. But it is quite fascinating to see uh, the coins that they're choosing and the rumors that we got before about them potentially adding Cardano and many other coins to their um, holdings platform, what have you. 
Um, very popular news simply because I think it came, it really came out of left field. Grayscale adds 174,000 Litecoin. Uh, Grayscale bought 80% of all Litecoin mined in February. I assume this is basically, I don't know. <clears throat> Litecoin, this is driving me crazy. <clears throat> Litecoin is, is a legacy coin. Many people do have Litecoin. Um, Litecoin's value comes from uh, that it's kind of Bitcoin's test net, if you will. We also know that Litecoin is getting upgrades and Mimblewimble and many other things on top of it as well. So maybe that has to do with it. Anyway, they bought nearly all the Litecoin that was out there. And I have a strange feeling that the other 20% were also purchased by other institutions. Yeah, we'll see where this goes. Anyway, that's the Litecoin news. Don't hear that too often. And let's move on. In, sure, why not? The major Colombian commercial bank. <laughs> this is driving me nuts. I wish I could actually convey to you how I, I keep seeing people in the comment section and like, dude, can you stop doing that? I'm like, I can't help it. I don't know why. It, I've I almost started singing the Lincoln Park song. I kid you not. <laughs> don't know why. Doesn't even matter how hard you try. Uh, but it, it is what it is. The major Colombian commercial bank, Banco de Bogota, has begun a crypto pilot that will see a select group of its customers be allowed to make crypto transactions on its banking platform per portafolio. The pilot will begin this month and will allow customers to make crypto deposits and withdrawals to its mobile and virtual internet desktop banking platforms. As part of the pilot, customers will be able to trade their crypto holdings and exchange them for fiat Colombian pesos. Directly depositing the fiat into their accounts, the crypto exchange linkups will also allow customers to use fiat holdings in their accounts to buy crypto without first sending the money to an exchange. <clears throat> so this is kind of crazy. Um, and it says it's somewhere around here. I'm not sure if it is. It says the bank is the oldest in the country and has 640 branches. This is a major bank in Colombia who's allowing all their customers. It says it's a pilot, but we know what happens after the pilot. It, it, it becomes widespread and everyone starts to do it. <clears throat> if the oldest, and I'm going to assume one of the richest banks in Colombia, you don't have 640 branches without having any money, is allowing their customers to start doing this. And eventually, like, it's basically you can use crypto to buy and sell. And I assume they're going to be like a, a card issuance or it's going to be completely linked to your account. This is major. News like this typically doesn't make the news, if you will. But every single day that we get a brand new bank who's doing this, who's doing that, who's integrating crypto, it's one more, it's not even a notch on our belt. It's like another, I can't think of anything big enough. I thought of like that huge snowball rolling down a hill like an avalanche, but that doesn't make any sense either for crypto. The snowball gets bigger every single time uh, because every single bank is consistently talking about getting into crypto and integrating it and making an ETF and Bitcoin futures and cryptocurrency trading platforms, but they're all doing it. There's no reason why Bitcoin's price, and I'm just going to focus on Bitcoin, should ever actually be dropping at this point. I think we could probably have days where we only go up by 0.1%, but any downtrend in price is completely ludicrous. We know all these, I'm not going to even do it. The point is, here's the actual article. Right here, um, Banco de Bogota participará en piloto de cripto monedas, 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 Monet cripto monedas, cripto monedas. That sounds correct. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't understand how anyone could be bearish on on Bitcoin. And I guess I mean shout out to all the resilient people out there who keep writing in the comment section that I don't understand what's happening and that XRP or what's the other one. I don't get Lumens people anymore, but there's another group of people who keep telling me like, dude, Bitcoin's going to get overtaken. And I'm like, where? Tell me exactly where this is going to happen. Anyway, um, that's an entire bank with 670 branches who are going to be integrating cryptocurrency for their customers. Um, what more do you need? Not really sure. Anyway, let's move on. In unsurprising news, the U.S. SEC Commission has received an application from the CBOE to list Van X already proposed Bitcoin ETF. Yet another attempt for a U.S. approved Bitcoin exchange traded fund is on the horizon. 
coming from the Chicago Board Options Exchange, or the CBOE. The organization's filing with the SEC aims to build on a previous S-1 filing initiated by Van Eck. We have Van Eck, we have the CBOE, we have the CME. <clears throat> I don't think the Winklevoss twins have put another proposal forward. Uh, we had this one yesterday, for those of you who were not here. Um, Goldman Sachs is restarting their cryptocurrency exchange. They're restarting their uh, Bitcoin futures. And uh, allegedly, allegedly, they're um, exploring... Why did I do three? They're exploring the <laughs> the potential for a a Bitcoin ETF, which is nonsense because we know that they're we know Goldman Sachs doesn't announce we we might try and make an ETF. No, they're going to try and make a Bitcoin ETF, and I assume that they're going to receive the first Bitcoin ETF in the U.S. because they're Goldman Sachs. Anyway, um, the and I don't have it in this video because it doesn't seem extremely relevant, but. Uh, it was something with the SEC and Hester Pierce and someone else like a day or two ago where they were basically like, yeah, it's coming. A Bitcoin ETF is coming. Just kind of wait for it. And I assumption that it's just going to be Goldman Sachs first. I feel like and I felt this way in 2017 to 2018 as well. Um, a lot of the times when we hear about smaller institutions who are trying to launch products that are based on anything and in, in this specific case based on Bitcoin. I don't think that regulators are going to be like, you know what? You got a million dollars in asset under management. Let's give it to you. I think that they want it to be kind of prestigious in a sort of way. I mentioned this before. When I, f I forgot what it was in 2018 that the, the SEC and CFTC were also doing. But I was like, I have a feeling they want it to, I think, my opinion, I think that regulators feel like they were still in the 1950s. And that the longer they take for something to launch or to come to fruition, that it's like we may feel that like we earned it. Yes, it finally took seven years for them to finally launch a Bitcoin ETF. We finally are legitimate as a space when that's not really how it works. Once again, this is this is just my opinion, because so many other things within the regulatory space seems to be like a just wait, just go slow. Let's see how it is when the cryptocurrency market and the cryptocurrency space is really rapidly exploding. Um, there have also been articles the last couple of days. Remember the one that we had from, was it Janet Helen? Janet, J Janet Yellen. I think it's Janet Yellen. Who was like, oh, be wary of crypto, yada, yada, yada. These are popping up much more from now from like financial regulators around the world simply because they see what's taking place. Um, even the news that we had... A week and a half ago, where that guy, um, that the economic guy, or whatever, was like, "Yeah, we've seen tons and tons of companies just within Mexico who are all trying to get into the cryptocurrency space." So I assume for regulators, it becomes a thing where I think that they thought that everyone else would kind of wait on the sidelines to get into the cryptocurrency space and go, "Okay, we're waiting for that ETF," but they're doing it in many other ways. The idea that publicly listed companies are now just purchasing Bitcoin and being like, yeah, we got Bitcoin. And the other ones are trying to also raise tons of money to do it as well. It, 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 they're basically stepping over the regulators and going, well, see you later because they're going too slow. People aren't waiting for a, a Bitcoin ETF or an exchange traded note or an exchange traded product because they're going to Canada to do it. They're going to Sweden. They're going to Denmark. They're going to any other country that has these products already so that they can gain some type of exposure to Bitcoin. They go directly to Coinbase. They go to Binance. They go anywhere they, that they, they need to go to do what, whatever they want to do or are trying to do with, within the United States, they can already do in other countries. So I this is just me. I feel like the, the, the regulators, and this is around the world, not just within the U.S., but especially the U.S., actually, uh, takes so long to do things. And it's like no one actually cares. Our market is going to continue to explode in price regardless if we have an ETF or not. Like an ETF will, of course, help because we'll know for a fact that this company has this allocation of Bitcoin. They bought 16,000 Bitcoin. They have 900 Bitcoin in their fund. That's great. That's wonderful. But they're going to be buying regardless. These banks are going to be buying. These banks who are talking about integrating it and allowing their customers to be able to buy, sell, and hold it, they're buying Bitcoin as well. Anyway, so the news um, has been for a while that at some point this year, we are going to see a Bitcoin ETF. I assume that will propel us to the astronomical sum of 150000 and or $200,000 plus dollars per Bitcoin. Just do it. Like, I, what's the, what's the, what is the holdup? Like, I don't really get it. The, the excuse in 2018 was uh, that they needed more institutions 
They needed um, more custody solutions and more something else. Well, you got it. What are you waiting for? Nobody really cares, SEC. And I'm not trying to, I'm really not being whatever or anti-establishment, whatever word you need to use, but it's like a just do it so we can all move on because no one really cares. Next up. Developers of Dogecoin, a meme-based cryptocurrency, have announced the release of a new update to the protocol. This will help it to scale in light of increased interest in the cryptocurrency, basically because of Muskie. Dogecoin Core version 1.14.3 is described as a minor version release, but the developers strongly recommend that everyone using it should update it as well. The cryptocurrency has been making headlines since Elon Musk likes it, Gene Simmons likes it, and a number of other celebrities also came forward. Um, you can see the word on the screen. Uh, helping to pump its price to eight cents. It has 80 cents and never went that high. It went to eight. Eight cents. Uh, so apparently Dogecoin is now getting an upgrade. I am shocked that this didn't happen before. But alas, here we are. Um, I really think Dogecoin is here to stay. It's just an inkling in the back of my head. I have a very strange feeling we're going to see a, a we, if we saw eight cents, I think we're going to eventually see a 10 cents, a 15 cents, a 19 cent doge. When we get to around a 32 cent doge, whether that be this year or in five years, we're going to start getting calls for a $1 doge. I can just feel it. It's something in the air. Um, I always imagine how crazy it would be like, okay, so imagine the, the now this is listen. This is not a forecast. This is not me telling you to do this. It's just more of a, I think a lot of weird things. I've sat there before thinking, I was like, in 2010, when we all heard about, we, we all heard the word Bitcoin in 2010, 11, or 12, at some point, didn't pay it any mind. None of us could have ever expected that Bitcoin would be as big as it is right now. It just wasn't a thing. It was completely out of left field. No one would ever even pay attention to that. And I sat there thinking, and I was like, wouldn't it be really weird if at some point in three or four or five years, someone, let's say YouTube or eBay or something like that, they're like, okay, you know, we're going to have Dogecoin as a payment option. And then Tesla's like, yeah, you want to buy a Tesla? You can use Dogecoin. You see people riding down the road in a Tesla with a gigantic Dogecoin on the side of their car or people buying homes with Dogecoin. I, I think of all these really weird things like as to where the space can actually go. And I'm like... Wouldn't that be really weird if it goes to like a dollar fifty or two dollars in like three, four, five years? And I'm like, anyway, I, I I I think all these things, and I sit there like, not should I buy Dogecoin? But it's like, wouldn't that be really weird if you own like one point one million Dogecoin and someone's like, yeah, I, dude, I got this for like a hundred bucks. Look at all the stuff I can buy. I I I think of, I guess it's just alternate realities. Anyway, I'm also a weird person, so. But you can see that from the videos. Anyway, that's the Dogecoin news. They're going to be getting an update. And let's move on. Next up. While Bitcoin hovers near a $1 trillion market cap again, the 12-year-old network is under greater stress than ever. Wow. To keep the network chugging along, the MIT Media Lab yesterday announced a $4 million, four-year-long research and development program to protect the Bitcoin network. Uh, the news being, the, the mega news being, that it was backed by Jack Dorsey, Michael Saylor, and uh, the Winklevoss twins. That was actually, like, it was like a, most of the photos for this were like those four men standing there, like, triumphantly being like, MIT partners with rich people to make Bitcoin Bitcoiner. The Bitcoin software and security effort seeks to strengthen Bitcoin against potential attacks by building up long-term defenses, improving automation, and battle testing the network, the DCI also wants to make it easier to improve Bitcoin. So that's the kind of the news. MIT is being funded in part by uh, rich people within the cryptocurrency space who are going to try and make Bitcoin more secure and more more robust. That's the news. Uh, I think uh, it, it, it became really popular because of these names. But it's like, did you think that they would not be putting money into things to make their investment a lot more secure anyway once again it's a computer it's going to have upgrades so get it or go do it I, I don't know let's move on next up stone ridge an asset manager with over 13 billion dollars in assets under management plans to add bitcoin to its fund 
focusing on inter... <laughs> Internative. Focusing on alternative investments, New York City-based asset manager Stone Ridge has filed documents with the U.S. SEC on behalf of its diversified alternative fund to introduce Bitcoin as the seventh investment strategy. According to the SEC filing, the addition will become effective on the 26th of April of this year. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that the giant asset manager will proceed with its Bitcoin endeavor. Stop it. Stop it. Why else would they be doing this? I have, a, I have a strange feeling. What are they called? Stone Ridge. $13 billion. They're probably not wasting their time filing something for nothing. They're trying to get into it as quickly as possible because everyone needs to go through the SEC. And they don't want to they they want to get it before the price completely explodes and they realize, oh, we should have did this a year and a half ago. The filing enables Stone Ridge to receive exposure to the diversified alternatives fund to Bitcoin through put options on Bitcoin futures contracts. Put options allow investors to sell a certain amount at a predetermined price in the future, but they are not obliged to. Wonderful. So that's your uh, rich people getting into cryptocurrencies for today. Don't forget that we also had a um, an entire bank also get into it. Just don't. Don't forget any of that. Here's the actual SEC filing right here. Not going to go through the entire thing, but you get the gist. Yeah, you get it. Anyway, that's the rich people buying up more Bitcoin because that's what they do. And let's move on. And to finish things off, Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency payment provider, BitPay, has revealed that its U.S. cardholders will be able to use their cards to complete transactions through Apple Pay. Wow! The card makes it possible to link the account to transactions paid with Bitcoin. From there, users can use the mobile wallet normally and pay through cryptocurrency, said the press release. This makes it possible to shop using Bitcoin in-store, in-apps, and for online transactions, according to the company later on this quarter. It will also start supporting Google Pay and Samsung Pay. So the news is... If you have Apple Pay through BitPay, you can now pay in crypto pay. Um, and eventually gonna get, they're going to get to Google Pay and Samsung. Who doesn't have a pay? They couldn't think of any other word like Google Money or Samsung Funds. Apple uh, Skin. Apple Peel Skin. Apple. All right. Anyway. Um, yeah. So cool. This is happening all the time as well. I just I just want everybody to understand that our market is incredible sounds kind of weird. It's just more like a everything is making sure to integrate us. Um I read something a couple days ago and they were basically saying that like remember yesterday we were talking about like the the tipping point for Bitcoin and, you know, the point of no return and how, how adoption is, you know, massive, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the only really thing that we're missing right now is for basically for Amazon, for Apple and Google to basically come out in the open and say, hey, we also own Bitcoin. I'm not sure why people always need validity from rich people to in order to get into something it makes no sense it's kind of like how tons of people jumped into bitcoin because they heard that elon musk bought it and i'm like you didn't get it before that elon musk was going to be buying bitcoin because of all the news that we had like it's not that he bought it because of you know randomosity it's not a word it's because all the stuff we've been going over uh the last couple of years has all led to him buying and therefore everyone had that exact same information on the internet because it's free so um, I'm just once again worried that by the time Apple and Amazon announce that they've gotten into it, Bitcoin's going to be 200,000. People are going to start piling into it when they could have gotten it for a lot cheaper. But, you know, wait, whoa, that phoneception, Got two phones next to me, I'm trying to figure out which one to anyway. Um, right. So yes, Bitcoin integration through BitPay. If you're using Apple Pay. Uh, remember the thing? What was the thing that we had yesterday? It was Jack Dorsey and was it Citibank? I think Citibank. They said by 2028, they expect Bitcoin to basically be everywhere. You can pay for everything in, in Bitcoin. I mean, you already can buy anything you want in Bitcoin. Just a matter of how you go about doing it. But um, yeah. 
As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, and Carlos was like, Mobarazzi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva quoted Biddy, Barebones Mining, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Crypto Stahl, Pater Noster, Conan Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolek Banan, Auspicious Agile. Why'd I scream that one? Tolek Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain. Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Storio Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Graysick, Moher Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, the Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mun, Gialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to crypto. Body McBoat... <laughs> Body McBoatface. And he's... <laughs> Why? Why does that always get me? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it at all. <laughs> and he's on Fitness Monster Hunters. I don't get it. Monster Hunter staff. Arf Medic 17. Bake me a cake. Tigger of Macho Nisa on crypto with Lionel. Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. I wish I understood. I don't understand why it always gets me. It just doesn't... Bodie McBoatface. But it just doesn't... At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at $50,950. Here's the, whoop, the little movement upward. That looks like a face. If you look at it sideways, here's the forehead. Here's the brow. Here's the nose, the lips, and the chin. Uh, Ethereum is currently up by 1.6%. It is at 1,594. Uh, can can we just see Bitcoin go to 51,000 like right now? Because that'd be wunderbar. Um, Polkadot is up by 6%. Litecoin is up by 8. Assumption because of the massive purchase by Grayscale. Is that 193? Holy. In my mind, for some reason, Litecoin was still like not $8, but like 47 or something like that. Wow. Chainlink is up by 4%. Lumens is up by one. Nem is up by eight. Dogecoin is kind of up. Rat Bitcoin's up by the same exact number as Bitcoin. Aave's up by 5%. Anything else crazy? Crypto's up by 6%. EOS is up by five. Um, BSV is finally coin number 24. Can't wait till it hits coin number 150. Luna is up by 15%. All right. Neo's up by six. Huobi Token's up by six. Synthetics is up by 5.9. Anything else crazy? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Filecoin's up by 6. Kusama's up by 7. Lend is up by 9 percentile. And Zcash is up by 5% as well. Yeah, cool. Um, Once again, no real reason why our market should have been going down before. But alas, here we are. So let's hope that, you know, prices reflect reality. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be on this ridiculous planet. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.